dee 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 dee. I wonder if I ought to, like, cut the uh, extra leading please stand by music when I actually post this on Facebook. And there's a part of me that says yes, and a part of me that says no. Let's just do it this way. Speaking of doing it this way, I. Yep, I think so. I think this might actually be the time. It might be that magical, mystical, mani maniacal, moronical moment. And I remember to take the microphone off mute, and you guys don't understand how big an achievement that is, considering the way this week has gone. Hello. <laughs> yeah. We have, thank you, Chris and uh, Michael and Tina and Kay. Yes, uh, standing is not required. I'm not standing. I like this. I've been doing fairs and festivals for like almost, wow, darn near 30 years now. And I like to sit down during these shows just to prove I still can. So, you know. Let me see. Best seating position is over this way. So move the ukulele over here so I can get to it without lunging off shot. Hi. Welcome to Memorial Day. This is the, 20, the 39th Troubadork show ever. Wow. I'm kind of startled. I am, of course, Tobias the Adequate. This is the hat. You remember the hat. If you, uh, if you're, if you ran into me in Texas, this is probably the hat you think of when you think of Tobias the Adequate's hat, instead of the thing with feathers, which I've worn for the past couple, three shows. Um, if you know me from California, this is one of a series of increasingly goofy hats. Uh, it actually gets goofier if I want to. Then it gets nice. It, it can get incredibly stupid, but let's put that back down there because this is kind of the shape that it took after one uh, very rainy day at Sherwood Forest when I was there as a visitor, and I basically brought the hat to keep the rain off my face. And my, my lady took it, and it was damp, and she took it and rolled this up and pushed that down and smoothed this around, and it's my hat. And thus it has been my hat for many, many years. I have uh, a replacement hat, hat uh, on order from Lynn Coombs in uh, the Los Angeles area. She does uh, Northern and Southern California fairs. And the uh, the uh, haberdashery, I guess is the best way of putting it, at Dickens Fair as well. So, And the hair braiding booth. Hair braiding booths in much of California. So if you've ever had your hair braided at a Renaissance Festival in California, you might have been at her booth. True story. True story. Oh my gosh, so wow, you're here. Everybody's here, holy cow, look at all these people showed up. Yes! <laughs> Hello, Rexana. Hello, Ashley, you made it, thank you. Um, I am still doing this the old-fashioned way, which is to say kind of clunkily, where I have a window with uh, the OBS studio, and then I have a window with my live stream, because I haven't figured out how to grab the chat out of that and throw it someplace more useful. Um, when I do transition over to a different product for my streaming, I will probably be able to have the live chat actually happen in screen, like over on this side or over on this side or what have you. But it does mean that we'll be moving from the Matthew Laguerre page to the Tobias the Adequate page, which I probably should have done in the first place, but I mean, this was entirely a spur of the moment when I started doing it low these 39 shows ago. That's a long time, man. 39 shows. Well, let's see. Four shows a day, that's eight shows a week, eight by four is 32, so that's about a little over half of a uh, general Ren Faire season. Think about that for a minute. That kind of worries me, I can tell you that. So we do in fact have a Jolly Singalong show today with Jolly Singalong songs and Jolly Singalong choruses. And uh, my lovely wife is checking to make sure the show is actually coming through over there in another room. So I'm actually hearing myself on a 15 second delay. So it's like, wah! I'm here, I'm there, I'm lit. I'm literally beside myself. You're also muted over here, so since I can hear you. I'm also muted over here it's because she can hear me over there. I really, honestly, what the heck? <laughs> Let's do the thing. Let us do the actual thing. Uh, the thing in question is going to be where I... Oh, by the way, check this out. I actually managed to get the... Uh, ooh, I, I got to manage, manage to get things off of the underside of the, score, of the screen here because I learned how to edit video just a little bit 
And, uh, oh, even better. It gets better. My story gets better. You want to see how good my story gets? My score gets this better. Oh, what is that? That's right. We have choruses. We have choruses now. So you guys can sing along. Look at that. I'm pretty happy with it. It only took me far too long. <clears throat> so this is Reaver Johnny Reaver, a traditional um, serenity verse shanty. And uh, feel free to sing along with the chorus. And eventually we'll get it so that I can actually have like the whole song, but that requires a level of production value I am not currently capable of. So work with me on this. My ship got stopped by an EMP. Reaver, Johnny Reaver. Now they're gonna eat but not kill me. And I'm dinner for a Reaver chorus. Reaver, Johnny Reaver. Oh, Reaver, Johnny Reaver. Ha Chu Shang Cha Zhao Da Zhang Ho gonna run away from the reavers. Oh, I thought in space I would be free. Reaver, Johnny Reaver. Those blue handed goons, they won't get me. Gonna run away from a reaver. Reaver, Johnny Reaver. Oh, Reaver, Johnny Reaver. A Chu Shang Cha Zhao Da Zhang Ho. Gonna run away from the reavers. I thought my cunning would prevail. Reaver, Johnny Reaver, curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal. And he got it by a reaver, oh dear. Reaver, Johnny Reaver, oh, Reaver, Johnny Reaver. Ha Chu Shang Cha Zhao Da Zhang Ho, gonna run away from the reavers. Oh, he floated like a leaf on the wind. Reaver, Johnny Reaver. As a hood on a mud, he found his end. Who wrote this? God, he got killed by a reaver. Reaver, Johnny Reaver. Oh, Reaver, Johnny Reaver. A Chu Shang Cha Zhao Da Zhang Ho Gonna run away from the reavers Once more, Reaver Johnny Reaver Oh, Reaver Johnny Reaver A Chu Shang Cha Zhao Da Zhang Ho Gonna run away from the reavers Yes, K is asking if this what this is. I believe that it is Mandarin. Um, it may be Cantonese, uh, but it is from the verse. It's from Serenity. I actually did some research while I was doing this goofy song up, and that is the phonetic spelling of everything over here. Ha Chu Sheng Chao Zhao De Zhang Ho, which is not quite pronounced the same way they pronounce it. Ha Chu Sheng Chao Zhao De Zhang Ho, which is very fast and doesn't fit the scansion. The actual definite, the, the actual translation, according to the site that I got it from, is "filthy fornicators of farm animals." That's right, "filthy fornicators of farm animals," and now you know. I was really trying to go for the Empress of Heaven and her seventeen goofy nephews, but I couldn't get that one to fit. There's always next time. There's always next time. Maybe I'll write a song about a uh, cunning hat. Not like I know anything about cunning hats. Nah. <laughs> Can you honestly believe that we do this and we get away with it? I mean, it's just... What the heck are we thinking? Oh. Hey, Michael says, it's fun singing harmony with me. Yeah, you know, I am trying very hard to do the um i'm trying very hard to do the melody i'm a tenor 
they don't give the tenor the melody in most songs we wind up having to sing like the high harmony part and then somebody else who's a baritone or as i like to call them smug smirking baritonic bastards uh they get to sing the melody but this time around i, I do my best to stay in there and yes, Kay, it is, that is very close. Uh, it wasn't quite a uh, frog-humping son of a bitch, but it is, let's be honest, pretty darn solid. Um. <laughs> I like the fact that this thing is actually beginning to um, show the actual stream. Michael Vance like Smug Baritone, yes. I can actually see these things. There is a 15-second delay. But that's okay, because it's Facebook and we're not paying for it, are we? Well, we are, in more ways than one might think. Let's do another song. Uh, this was going to be Beer Glorious Beer. And that's what I put on the Patreon uh, post that I made to say, i got to remember to gesture with this hand, because this, on well, neither hand, I'm really squeezed in really tight. Look at this. Oh, my God, I'm right in here. One day when I actually, uh, well, I'm actually working on this with a certain somebody to try and turn this into, like, a, one of those fancy schmancy streamer pages. And then I'll have, like, the entire screen to gesture at. But it will still be condensed down tiny. So there we are. Um, this was going to be beer, beer Glorious Beer, and I thought about it, and I thought about it, and I thought about it, and I came to the conclusion that it's a good song, but you don't get a lot of chances to sing the chorus. It's it basically three go rounds and we're done. However, this song I think is more fun for everyone involved. And I think it's not only more fun for everyone involved, it lets me say that Quigley Finch is a freaking genius and um way off in the western lands where he sings with salty walt and scratcher as part of salty walt and the ratlin ratlines he also happens to work for a uh the uh, burger company that makes burgers by robot if you are in the bay area you could do worse than order a hamburger literally untouched by human hands literally like to the point where it actually has a conveyor belt that goes up and delivers the burger in the bag to the window that opens up an airlock, and then you reach in and get your hamburger, and you go away. It's true. It is true. All right. So, Captain's Log. Change that. See, I have to do each one of these manually, because I'm not that good at it. <clears throat> it starts in C, by the way. Oh, the name of the ship on which we sail is a jolly roving dog. And the crew be bold, the bosun's old, and we all do love our grog. The captain was the toughest man to ever sail the seas. Until one thing finally struck him down, was a nasty French disease. Oh, the name of the ship on which we sail is a jolly roving dog. And we will not rest upon our quest to find the captain's log. Oh, the captain finally met his match, old friends, she finally won. The first mate sat beside him for the setting of the sun. And the last words of the captain to the good crew of the dog was that none shall ever take his place till they find the captain's log. Oh, the name of the ship on which we sail is a jolly rolling dog. And we will not rest upon our quest to find the captain's log. So we searched down in the scuppers and we searched up in the nests. For a time we kept our spirits high with witty words and jests. But soon a gloom enveloped us thick as a pea soup fog. For no matter where we looked, we could not find the captain's log. Oh, the name of the ship on which we sail is a jolly roving dog. And we will not rest upon our quest to find the captain's log. So at last we took to the great big book that the captain brought to sea, in which he put each day's events as written a history. But no matter where we searched inside the dust and lofty tome, we could not find where the captain's log had chosen for to roam. Oh, the name of the ship on which we sail is a jolly roving dog. And we will not rest upon our quest to find the captain's log of the many logs that we did find. 
they all didn't look the same. But we never once found a piece of wood inscribed with the captain's name. Oh, the name of the ship on which we sail is a jolly roving dog. And we will not rest upon our quest to find the captain's log once more. And the name of the ship on which we sail is a jolly roving dog. And we will not rest upon our quest to find the captain's The Captain's Log, a lovely tale. Beast! Oh my gosh, you guys don't understand. Beast is here. Hi, Beast! Oh my gosh, welcome. Jeez, you, you're here at like, you know, way able to like do productive things at a clock over on the West Coast. Hey, that's great. Robert Eisenberg, also known as the Beast. His mom calls him that. It's okay. It was like Sea Dog Old Hands Week. I love it. I love it. This is the joy and the terror of the internet. Um, now I have to remember what the next song is. Actually, I don't have to remember what the next song is because I have a PowerPoint presentation up here that allows me to see what the next song is. It's just pretty easy. That's right. As B says, she started it. My son the beast, as she liked to call him. Fondly. Mostly. Harmony wants to know what webcam you're using. Well, I'll tell you what I'm doing right now, actually, is I am cheating horrifically. I am using the uh, OBS Open Broadcast uh, Studio, which is a uh, open source program. And I'm actually using my iPhone camera right now because there's a little $15, 15 dollars uh, app called uh, iOS, Cam iOS Camera for OBS. And what it lets me do is plug in this camera, which has all of the iPhones, you know, smart camera stuff. Like, hey, the lights changed, or hey, the focus has changed, or hey, he's moving around, he's gesticulating wildly, quickly, let's resolve this, and makes it into a webcam. And it goes through and comes out and bang right there. Uh, there are a couple of other webcam things if you are not using um, OBS. Um, there's one that I've, I can't remember the name of it right now. And if I go and look at it, I will never see it again. Uh, I will actually lose my, my picture here. But there's a, a few of those and most of them are ad driven. I'm willing to spend the 16 bucks for now. So that I have this good camera until I can spend more money and get like a really good camera. So that way also, if I ever leave this job and give them back this phone, I can still have a camera to show with. <laughs> So that's part of our technical content for this show. Yeah, so um, OBS uh, webcam, it's called OBS Camera for iOS. I bought it right off of the, uh, I bought it right off the uh, App Store, and that's what I'm currently using. I have a tripod, which is a really, really, really cheap $5 tripod I got off of Wish that starts out as a selfie stick and then <laughs> the feet flop down. There's a similar kind of thing if you look on like, you know, that most of the inexpensive sites like Walmart and stuff, you'll find one there for about 15. Um, if you're willing to play Wish Roulette, you can do that. Or if you just have a selfie stick that already stands up, you can do that too. Oh, Beast wanted to clarify something. Beast is actually shortened from You Rotten Little Beast, which is a nickname that he's had since he was eight. Well, there you go. <laughs> hey, and Danica is singing harmonies with us up in North, Carol North Carolina. Dang. Y'all moved around again. Either y'all moved or you're on a trip. Either way, hi. Be careful up there, because North Carolina, is there's some stuff going on, um, which is not uh, content for this website, but it's probably content for a chat elsewhere, which we'll get to later. I really should do another song, shouldn't I? Yeah, it's only like this is supposed to be a sing-along show. Jeez, you moron. How about John Barleycorn? Yes, this is the version that I learned from um, the Jolly Beggar, 
who do a version which is based off of a uh, Morris dancing tune, which is um, based off of a song of an entirely different content. And that's what I love about Renaissance festivals. Um, you get this weird interwoven uh, cross-pollination here. This is actually a song set to The Idiot by Stan Rogers. <clears throat> the fact that you actually see the chorus in there that's lovely i'm actually looking down at when i look down over here i'm actually looking at that so if i'm looking over here and it looks like i'm looking off screen it's because i'm looking at my actual other other screen there john barley corns to the sea gone down in a ship both bold and new the first the slake of captain drake and all his loyal crew to venture brave through wind and wave the spaniard for to halt he die of Spanish grape, he'll live as English malt. So we'll strike him down, and we'll bind him round, and we'll serve him worse than that. We will grind his bones between his stones, and we'll bung him in a vat. Then we'll drink his health in nut brown ale, and we'll raise our glasses high. For before that he can live again, John Barleycorn must die. John Barleycorn's to the court and gone, all dressed in fine array. In pewter clad from toe to head to win a lady gay. The poetry that he declaims will stand him in good stead. For the ladies there all do declare they love it more than bread. So we'll strike him down and we'll bind him round and we'll serve him worse than that. We will grind his bones between two stones and we'll bung him in a vat. Then we'll drink his health in nut brown ale and we'll raise our glasses high. For before that he can live again, John Barleycorn must die. John Barleycorn's to the hangman gone, this tale I will unfold. For Robin Honest Englishmen of their silver and their gold, in a grave unmarked by cross or stone, John Barleycorn is lain. Till the summer rains have come and gone, and he rises up again. No matter how many times I play this particular tune, this verse always strikes me as unnecessarily messianic. So we'll strike him down and we'll bind him round and we'll serve him worse than that. We will grind his bones between two stones and we'll bung him in a vat. Then we'll drink his health in nut brown ale and we'll raise our glasses high. For before that he can live again, John Barleycorn must die. So we'll strike him down, and we'll serve him worse than that. We will grind his bones, and we'll bung him in a vat. Then we'll drink his health in nut brown ale, and we'll raise our glasses high. For before that he can live again, John Barleycorn must die. The second bit there is a bit of syncopation, which I learned from watching The Jolly Beggar, and I can't not do it. You may have heard me almost do it early in the song, when I shouldn't have, and I should do it at the very end. But, you know, I'm not very good at this, and that is the official motto of the Troubadour show. As a matter of fact, I even have some buttons that say, I am not very good at this over here. Which you can obtain for your very own possession at the Troubadour shop, in the Tobias The Adequate Facebook page and also at theadequate.com. Just go to theadequate.com and click on me, Tobias The Adequate, and you'll get to the shop eventually. Woo! <laughs> yes, as Chris says, Circo Cycle of Seasons reflecting messianic ideas say it's not so. It's a metaphor. It's allegorical! Yeah! <laughs> Taser face! Now, now everyone gets that reference. All right. <laughs> it's metaphorical! Yeah! Fortunately, most of the people watching this show are big nerds and probably saw that movie and got the reference, so that's good. Oh my goodness, how are y'all doing? Everybody doing okay on this uh, very strange time in a very strange place? Hmm. I am wearing a poppy, and um, this poppy is for Memorial Day, and Memorial Day is when we reflect on and honor those who have served... And who have uh, who have gone before, so that 
theoretically, less of us have to do that sort of thing. And um, we'll get a little bit more into that. We're going to get a little bit more into that later, but we're not going to get too heavy because this is a Tribute Arc show. Geeky, nerdy, goofy songs for geeky, nerdy, goofy people as performed by me. A geeky, nerdy goof. What's a metaphor? Oh, actually, you know, if you're building a, if you're building a, a, a logical argument, you need a meta two by four. But I digress. Yes, we're going to do this one. <laughs> I wrote this song and finished writing this song, I should say, about less than a week ago. Um, and I am very happy about this. Hey, Jules, how are you? Goodness me, I'm every showing up. I like it. Thank you for hanging out. Um, this song is a song uh, which is set up as I created it as an advertising jingle for Oscar Hasselhoff's Manual of Defense entitled Grab Them by the Crutch and Throw Them Out the Window, which is also known as the Hasselhoff Maneuver. And if you have never tried to say maneuver with a thick German accent, you can hurt yourself bad. Limber up first. Um, so this started out as just the chorus, which you see here, and, uh, there's a whole song that goes with it. The chorus is over here. I it. Pointing in the wrong place. What was that? Because I demanded a song. Yes, Amy demanded a full song once I did the chorus. My lovely wife, without whom I would be dead in a ditch on fire. So the chorus, which I wrote initially, just goes, um, hang on. I know how it goes, but I also want to have the cheat sheet up just in case I go horribly, horribly wrong. Goes, uh, just grab Zimba, grab Zimba is a crutch. One then throws them out the window. A lovely way to get above whatever makes you blue. Just grab Zimba is a crutch. One then throws them out the window. It's amazing what a little flick of wrist and arm can do. Sung very light and Bavarian and happy and later horsing and scampering down the mountain to go get into a violent fist fight. Because German. Because German. Amy. <laughs> Trey believes that the fire part of me being on fire would probably be RJ's fault at this point. No, no, because there's a very strict no fire on the husband policy and Trey knows why. Twice. Trey knows why twice. Because Trey was responsible for one, and then he stood by and let the other one happen. I did not hold him responsible for that one. No. He was only responsible for me wanting to shove a burning juggling torch into my face and put it out with my, my face. I like when I talk about eating fire, I always like to talk about putting out a torch with your face. Because there's at least three of you out there who have a mental image of me taking a torch and just going <laughs> until it goes out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Trey, it's true. If I did not have Amy, the no fire on the husband policy would not be in effect, and I would have been one hell of a finale. Once. Y'all are not making it easy to sing the dang songs! By the way, if you're watching the replay of this on Facebook, make sure you're playing the live comments as you go, or none of this makes sense. Final finale. Yes, that was my lovely wife, Amy, in the background. I really will sing the song. Focus! Light and German. I was gambling in Helsinki. Down upon my luck. Or a lot to these big Flemish guys. I felt as I was stuck. I thought I was a goner, show sure, surrounded by mine foes. Then I remembered Hasselhoff when he solved all my woes. For he wrote, Just grab them by the crotch, once then throw them out the window. A lovely way to get above whatever makes you blue. Just grab them by the crotch, once then throw them out the window. It's amazing what a little flick of wrist and arm can do. Well, I cleared myself out of there, and I fled down to the bar. 
A happily sip lager, maybe two or fifteen jars. Then some massive Swedish mercenary spoke ill of my ma. I did not think I could escape this peril quite unscarred. But then I remember Oscar Asserhoff and his manual of defense in which he wrote. Just grab them by the crutch, and then throw them out the window. A lovely way to get above whatever makes you blue. Just grab them by the crutch, and then throw them out the window. It's amazing what a little flick of wrist and arm can do. I had gathered, cried a crowd, by this great feat I did perform. I ordered me another round, for I had grown quite warm. But when time to settle came, pleas for credit were all scorned. And though I tried to stand my ground, my fate was quite forewarned. For they too had read Hasselhoff. So they grabbed me by the crutch, heap, and they threw me out the window. Aye, well, that was darn effective, I thought, as I was passing through. They grabbed me by the crutch. When they threw me out the window, yes, it seems the fenestration works on well as me as you. Everyone! Just grab them by the crotch, happy ones, and throw them out the window. A lovely way to get above whatever makes you blow. Just grab them by the crotch, ones, and throw them out the window. It's amazing what a little flick of wrist and arm can do. That was grab them by the crutch and throw them out the window from my upcoming folio, Music to Get Beaten Up 2. Formerly Music to Get Beaten Up by. However, field testing proves that no matter how tightly you roll a folio up, you cannot get an effective swat in with it. So therefore we had to use the other preposition. There we are. <laughs> I'm watching the side over here scroll and it's like, don't pay attention to the notes, don't pay attention to the notes, don't pay attention to the notes. If I pay attention to the comments while I'm singing, I'm going to bobble things. And you, there's there have been a couple of moments which I have heard. I don't know if you have or not. But because I know what it's supposed to sound like, uh, my best bet is to just pretend like I meant every single one of them and call it jazz. But jazz has not yet been invented. So I just say, what the heck, we'll just keep going. Um, no one has told me to stop yet, which is nice. And I will be completely frank with you. A lot of this has been kind of a live rehearsal with online heckling that's y'all and i appreciate the heck out of it because without y'all here what i'm doing right now would make even less sense true story oh, i love that song it is a fun song i will be singing it at some point at uh sherwood or scarborough or trf as an ad for As oscar hasselhoff's extremely useful book Yes, Chris is uh, Chris is taking uh, great glee in the fact that y'all are cracking me up from literally thousands of miles away. Usually, to heckle, you have to be sitting like within arm's reach. How do I appreciate the heckle out of it, Trey? Honestly, I know y'all heckle because you love me, and it's okay because I have done been doing this long enough that it no longer really affects me in any negative way whatsoever. Because let's be honest, this is basically every show that Tobias the Adequate does is a big goofy party with your crazy friend Tobias. And if it weren't for the interaction, it wouldn't be half as entertaining. Maybe a third. Or two thirds. Somewhere in that range. It's within areas of tolerance. You know, something like that. I'm not a director. I don't know. I don't have to care. What am I doing next? What am I doing next? I can't remember. Ah, yes! <laughs> The Piratey Song. This is a song that became what it is because I... was puttering around just kind of um, doing rather various mundane tasks. And at one point I was like, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. And then we'll steal their socks. What? And then we'll steal their socks. Oh, man, i got to write a song. <sighs> yes, long distance heckling, the magical digital age. 
Without the internet, none of this would be possible. I'd be playing quietly in my room, and you guys would all be thinking up rude things to say in the quiet, quiet privacy of your own rooms, and I even, wouldn't even have to be worry about getting those words out coherently. I need more caffeine. Mm. Ginger lime diet coke. Because I like my brown fizzy water to taste even weirder than normal. <sighs> I do drink diet coke. I drink a lot of water at fair, but I do drink diet coke as well. And at one point, I had I literally slammed down one of those twelve ounce bottles after one of my shows, and as I sat there degaussing, I suddenly began to belch, and I belched for I didn't have a stopwatch out, but I belched for what felt like about thirty seconds, and it was not a little belch; it was just one big long grunt. So this is a traditional airship pirate sock stealing sea shanty in the traditional mode. <clears throat> Come listen to me tale, me hearties, heed well to me call. We'll launch our ships and stealthily we'll glide over the wall. We'll land as soft as feathers and we'll deftly pick their locks. We'll pounce upon our prey, me boys, and then we'll steal their socks. Sock pirates in dirigibles, the sky be where we roam. Just looking for a decent pair without a holy toe. Sock pirates in the air, me lads, we'd clouds are where we roam. We'd all turn on the sailors if we just could make our own. The city watch. They know our ship. Each one does know our names. They stalk down us poor sailors and upon us heap their shame. We'd ransack every port in town for hosiery we adore. Tis not so much, not so much a fetish, ah, moral way of keeping score. Sock pirates in dirigibles, the sky be where we roam. Just looking for a decent pair without a holy toe. Suck pirates of the air, me lads, the clouds be where we roam. We'd all turn on the sailors if we just could make our own. We'd almost had our fill, me lads, but we made one stop more. Ah, costed a fair maiden coming out of the yarn store. This plucky lass, she was quite brave. She did not flinch a bit. She glared us down defiantly and taught us how to knit. Which ain't hard if you think about it. It does take a certain amount of focus, though. Suck pirates of the air no more, no longer do we roam. We've all turned on the sailors who know how to turn a toe. Suck pirates of the sky no more. We've settled down at home. We've all turned on the sailors now that we can make our own. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! A minor, it's a very piratey kind of key. R. Initially, it started in A, which is kind of like E. R. E. R. E. R. I do that in the live show, and people laugh because it's an idiot sitting on stage going, R. E. R. E. R. E. R. Whatever. <laughs> R. Give me an R! What's that spell? Not hard to be a pirate cheerleader, really. Um, but I do, do, uh, do digress. Ah, uh, so let's go, um, you know, I've been doing this now for, um, wow. This is, how many weeks is this? Holy crap. A lot. Um, over two months. Pretty certain. And I've been watching the number of views kind of roll up slowly, go upward. Which is really amazing. 
Um, because when the internet first became the internet, people became very famous on the internet for a lot of things. The, uh, you know, the Mayaki guy, the, uh, uh, the Badger song and all that other stuff. And I, I wanted to do these things, but I didn't have the access to the technology because the technology was much more expensive. Now that we have these little ubiquitous rectangles that people carry around with them all day long, walking into trees, staring at it, um, I can make videos, I can make songs, I can do this. I only need this rectangle to do the show. Everything else is just set dressing. And yet, I am still not famous. That annoys me a little. We'll get to that in a minute. But we're going to do this song next. One of my, again, one of my newer songs. Uh, Captain Peaches is, in fact, a member of Queen Margaret's uh, Scottish court. And uh, Keith, who plays Captain Peaches, has been on cast now for a year or two, a couple of years, something like that. Well, he, he actually was officially on cast uh, at least one year. Um, and uh, I wrote this song about him. And I've had some people go, well, when are you going to write a song about me? Well, it's true. I've written a song about Captain Peaches. I've written a song uh, for Oscar Hasselhoff. And I have written The Rescue of Roger Gaffron. Beast, you may want to have this. You may, may want to hear this one at some point because it's a, it's a lovely Roger Gaffron heckling tune. It's based on a true story. But this song is actually based on... The mighty, mighty Captain Peaches. We sing of thieves and noblemen who sail abounding seas, but this here ditty ain't about a single one of these. I sing of a daring swashbuckler who spans abounding reaches, the mighty, mighty corsair who is known as Captain Peaches. So batten down the hatches, boys, and dust the chandelier. For piracy is stylish whenever that pirate's near. He'll smite down any scalawag and leave the lady speechless. There's not a pirate as daring as the mighty Captain Peaches. He sails the endless bounty on the mighty raging queen. A ship the likes of which you poor land lovers never seen. She's got 16 gilded cannon, and the deck is always clean, and tea is served quite promptly every day at 419. So bend down the hatches, boys, and dust the chandelier, for piracy is stylish whenever that pirate's near. We'll strike down any scalawag and leave the lady speechless. There's none so great a pirate as the mighty Captain Peaches. Queen Margaret's royal hairdresser, his bravery knows no bounds. His enemies quake when his cry to the pits with them resounds. Yes, peach pits. The fiercest enemies have at his mercy quite compound. For he leaves his captain Fobin better groomed than when they found. It's an aesthetic. So bend down the hatches, boys, and dust the chandelier. For piracy is stylish whene'er that pirate's near. Smite down any scalawag and leave the lady speechless. There's not a pirate as daring as the mighty Captain Peaches. His ship in Scarborough Harbor has a special pride of place, as it can't sail very far with pastel rigging made of lace. It's an aesthetic, but the captain and his ship are art we never would debase. And once he pays his dock fees, then he's free to leave this place. So bend down the hatches, boys, and dust the chandelier. For piracy is stylish whene'er that pirate's near. He'll smite down any scalawag and leave the lady speechless. There's not a pirate as daring as the mighty Captain Peaches. One more time. Built it so bend down the hatches, boys, and dust the chandelier. Bam, bam, for piracy is stylish whene'er that pirate's near. He'll smite down any scalawag and leave the lady speechless. There's not a pirate as daring as the mighty Captain Peaches. <laughs> Woo! Yes, um, you will know we now have our first official true technical glitch of the Tobias the Adequate Troubadour show for this episode. Right here, where it actually says, bat down the hatches, boys, and hoist the chandelier. And it should say, dust the chandelier. That was not an intentional error, but 
much like the glitch in the sand paintings or that little gap in crochet, you want to give the song somewhere that the bad spirits can find their way out of and not to incite the muses with any concept of hubris on your part. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. So there. Whew. I really want to sing that song uh, at Scottish Court. Uh, partially because I really want to see uh, Jana Zepp, who plays Queen Margaret, pass beverage through her nose during it. I have managed to make every single, to the best of my knowledge, every single person playing a monarch at the Scarborough Renaissance Festival snarfle a beverage at least once. I think... This includes Princess Mary. I think. I may have to get some verification on that. But um, every actor who's played a monarch at Scarborough, I have managed to get <laughs> that happened. And it's a point of pride, because if I can make just one person pass beverage through their nose, I feel I've done my job. Now let's talk about this whole internet thing for a moment. Let me see. I think that's the next song. I hope so. I did all that spiel. It's like, oh, that's I'm still doing it early. Yep. Yep, there it is, folks. I wrote a song about how I'm not internet famous, hopefully in hopes I would actually become famous on the internet from singing a song about how I'm not famous on the internet. It's a bit meta, but that's okay. This one actually starts with the chorus, so y'all can just pick right up. Whew. Oh. Let's see if this is now. The scroll is actually keeping up with me this time around. Usually I see the scroll is like, I'm, I'm doing the songs, I'm talking about stuff, and I go on for like four minutes and suddenly <laughs> all this scrolling stuff over here and nothing else. And then there's suddenly all these new comments that I have to react to. Yes, indeed. I want to be internet famous. I want to make big internet bucks. I want to get buckets of exposure because not being internet famous sucks. I want to be internet famous because YouTube is just like being on TV. I want to be internet famous If those guys can do it, hey, why not me? So I want on the internet Find out how to be famous on the internet Porn! <laughs> so I went on a few more pages of the internet To find out how to be famous On the internet a game wear a hat put on some makeup show us your cat it's also easy who can blame us because everybody wants to be internet famous i want to be internet famous i want to make big internet bucks i want to get buckets of exposure because not being internet famous sucks i want to be internet famous because youtube is just like being on tv I want to be internet famous If those guys can do it, hey, why not me? <coughs> I wrote a solo. I'm going to try to solo. Proclaim was in 15 minutes we'll all be internet famous. I wanna be internet famous. I wanna make big internet bucks. I wanna get buckets of exposure. Cause not being internet famous sucks. I wanna be internet famous. Cause YouTube is just like being on TV. I wanna be internet famous. If those guys can do it, hey, why not me? Key change. a fuss. We all wanna be internet famous cause those guys can do it hey why not us? (laughs) 
I almost took myself sideways out of the chair on that one. That song is what we like to refer to as a banger. And it's been banging away on it. Now, I don't use a pick. And my fingernails have the structural integrity of damp cardboard. So I have broken more than one nail against nylon strings playing that song. Whew. It's a sing-along show. And we have songs to sing along. And when I thought about putting together the set list for this sing-along show, there is a song I had to do. We have to do it. We have to. It is required. It is a moral imperative that I do this next song. That's right. The unofficial sponsor of the Trooper Dork Show and so many shows like it, Bertha's Muscles. Mm -mm. That's right, Bertha's Muscles. You've had worse things in your mouth. Eat Bertha's Muscles. They're the best there is by far. You can eat a bite to eat just follow your nose to Bertha's you'll be in for a rare old treat well a sailor came to Bertha's who probably most severe yes it was his manly pride had been atrophied by a voyage of 14 years so he ate a plate of mussels now he sings in a different key his jibum stud right, he'll be back there tonight, and he's not going back to sea. So eat Bertha's mussels, they're the best there is by far. You can eat them in the dining room, you can eat them in the bar. So when you're ashore in Baltimore, and you fancy a bite to eat, just follow your nose to Bertha's, and you'll be in for a tree. Well, a lady came to Bertha's who wanted a daughter or son. The doctors had said with a shake of their heads that she couldn't have either one. So she ate a plate of mussels and went home to her husband dear. She tuned up his truth and to tell you the truth, they had triplets the very next year. So eat Bertha's mussels. Yum! They're the best there is by far you can eat them in the dining room you can eat them in the bar so when you're ashore in baltimore and you fancy a bite to eat just fire your nose to bertha's and you'll be in for a rare old treat well they'll cure your diarrhea thank god all your constipation too at once just follow a box for a chicken box or the measles or the flu. So if you fancy a healthy life, get your daily dosage straight. I'll play to your birth those muscles and you'll live to your 98. So oh, eat birth those muscles. Yum! They're the best there is by far. They're tasty. You can eat them in the dining room. You can eat them in the bar. So if you're sure and you fancy a bite to eat Just follow your nose to Bertha's And you'll be in for a rare old treat One more time? One more time? One more time? Oh hell yeah! Eat Bertha's mussels They're the best there is by far You can eat them in the dining room You can eat them in the bar So when you're ashore in Baltimore and you fancy a bite to eat Just follow your nose to Bertha's And you'll be in for a rare old treat I didn't give you the chorus to that one! That's the official second technical follow-up of the show. You guys knew it, though. 
We can fix it in post-production, or maybe we just don't care that much. There's always something I get carried away with. Because I'm running this whole show by myself, and I'm doing all this stuff kind of on my own as a one-man band. And consequently, as the title, as the official motto goes, I'm not very good at this. So we're going to make a few mistakes here and there. <laughs> Amy puts her in, yes! Oof. Oh, let's see. Yes, Eat Bertha's Muscle is one of my favorite songs to sing, actually. It's a grand, it's a banger. It is another grand banger, but it's a kind of a lovely Victorian banger. And yet, it is not what we would call a period song. This was actually written in the 60s or early 70s. And that means that if I were to record this, I would need what's called a mechanical license to do so. I can perform it, but if I were to record it, I would need a mechanical license. And it's like nine cents per something, 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 hand wave, something legal, something... I don't make enough money doing this something, something. <clears throat> Amy's saying, okay, if you can stage dive in through the second story window in San Antonio from Dallas-Fort Worth, you are far more than dangerous than I realized. K is entirely possible. It's entirely possible K can do that. Let's be completely frank about it. Oh my goodness me. It has been a genuine banger of a show, even with the technical fobbles, even with occasional things that I hear in my head that don't make a lot of sense. So let's, um, let's do a couple of things here. Just a little paperwork, first and foremost. Of course, a tip jar. Uh, in the event that you have free money and no sense, you can go to uh, paypal.me slash theadequate and ko-fi.com slash theadequate, and you can toss a couple of bucks in there. Hey, Jenny Park says that you rock. And she loves you. Well, Jenny, I love you too. Thank you for putting up with my, Thank you for tolerating my behavior. Let's be honest about this. None of you had to come here, but you came here anyway. Uh, Robert and Rick and Emily all have dropped some money in the, the tip jar, and I thank them very much. This goes into the Get Tobias some more better equipment and possibly some music lessons and stuff like that fund. Uh, of course, for those who want to commit to a slightly longer, to, longer term, then we have the Patreon.com over here where you can help support adequacy in our lifetime at patreon.com slash theadequate. BK... Joined last week, <clears throat> and Kaylee and Richard and Relly and John and Brian and Lorena and Alicia are all helping to support, uh, encourage me to do more stuff. And the money that comes in goes towards things like the app that I use to make my phone into a camera, song uh, software they use to pull chords out of some songs, which is why I now have the chords to burlap. It's a whole other conversation. Uh, things like that. Uh, my next big purchase will be an actual committed webcam, but I want to get a good one. Preferably one that can actually take the weird variations in lighting that happen here in this room and in the eventual room that I'd use, because it's not the room that we're going to do this show in all the time. This is just where I'm working while we're in quarantine. Um, I have another room, which I will we'll actually tell you about away next show. Ha <laughs> ha! Teaser! Um, and so I want to get a camera that can kind of be more robust in that area, and that is really what I'm shooting for. Uh, let me hear soundcloud.com slash Matthew Laguerre. That is, uh, let me, let's take this off for a moment here. E yes, that one there. We'll just make that go away for a sec. And, um, Don Matthew Laguerre is where I, uh, keep my SoundCloud stuff. I just recently recorded another song called Duck Float. That's got a kind of a, uh, demo version of that. There's a lot of demo kind of things. Things that seemed like a good idea at the time that I recorded. Um, Duck Float is actually a homage to my friend Lee Presson, who does a webcast from his location in an undisclosed location in Northern California uh, about every couple of weeks when he needs to fill up the pond where he lives. And he does a little thing called Duck Float where he sits and smokes a cigar and we watch ducks levitate up off, get lifted up off the rock that they're on by the raising, rising pond level. But it's a lot of other stuff and it's great fun. Uh, you can find the old shows at facebook.com slash Tobias the Adequate, where I am archiving them. When I start doing this directly at Tobias the Adequate, that's where you'll find them there. You can also find them at youtube.com slash M-P-L-E-G-A-R-E -E over here. Get my finger in the right part of this shot here. Under the Troubadour playlist, and I've started putting the newer Troubadour shows first, so there's a chance in hell that people will watch more than one and say, and, and not go, oh god, what the hell is he doing? And back away slowly and go back and watching cat videos and stuff like that. <sighs> um, Carpe Diem Comics is the official emotional comics, emotional support comic shop of Tobias the Adequate, the Troubadour Show, the Adequate Podcast, anything else I do. They're physically located in McKinney, Texas. You can find them at carpediemcomics.com. 
It's carpetdmcomicsonline.square.site. I've been talking for a full hour, gang. I mean, this is not always easy. And uh, they are physically located in McKinney, Texas. Check them out. Do support your local comic shops, your local gaming shops, your local craft stores. They don't have big corporates behind corporations behind them, so support them. Get a, get yourself a gift certificate. It's like a present to your future self. You'll pull that out one day and go, ooh, thanks, past self. You really like me. Mwah. Now, <clears throat> let me um, touch on something here. Again, this is Memorial Day. And it's long weekend. Um, in Scarborough Fair, we have a number of traditions which happen in Memorial Day. We have a parade where veterans who have people who are serving or have served can march in honor of those who have come before them. This poppy right here is a uh, symbol in honor of those who have given their lives. And there's a long, po lovely poem in Flanders Field, which I do not have and I will not read for you right now because I don't want to get uh, gummed up by it. But it's in honor of those who have served um, and are no longer with us. Memorial Day is for those who have served and are no longer with us. Veterans Day are for those who have served and are still with us. And Labor Day is for the working man, which is you, me, and everyone else who's watching this because we're all working class schlubs anyway. There's another tradition that happens <clears throat> every year, and it happens regularly at Scarborough, right around 7 p.m. When, after we finish up with the pub sings, because there are two of them, and that's a whole other story, we kind of troop back up to the main gate, and the entire cast does its best to gather in a big arc. And some stage tracks go, some don't. I tended to because I got licked by the cast early on and felt pretty much at home with them. Uh, Scarby folks are awesome. And I'm saying that because I'm, I wasn't the Scarby folk when I showed up. But there is a tradition that happens at the end of every, every uh, day. And this would, under normal circumstances, um, have been the last weekend for Scarborough. The actual schedule said it was going to be like one more weekend out, but um, let's be honest, long weekend is the one we all, in our hearts, feel like, okay, we're wrapping it up. Uh, so the thing that we do is that we sing The Parting Glass. <clears throat> now, I wasn't planning to do this when I first set up this sing-along show, but I felt like I needed to. And uh, if y'all want to join in, you can, because it's right here. <clears throat> um, I'm going to try and do the melody. I'm a tenor. Bear with me. You feel free to jump in when it feels comfortable. <clears throat> Of all the money the air I had, I spent it in good company. And all the harm that e'er I done, alas, it was to none but me. And all I've done for want of wit, to memory now I can't recall. So fill to me the parting glass. Good night and joy be with you all. Of all the comrades there I had, they're sorry for my going away. And all the sweethearts there I had, they'd wish me one more day to stay. But since it fell into my lot, that I should rise and you should not, I'll gently rise and softly call. 
Good night and joy be to you all. Godspeed and fare thee well. Until the next time we do this, until the next time I see you all here. Because let's be honest, it may stop, but it never ends. Y'all, I hope you have a good Memorial Day. We honor those who came before. We honor those who will come after us. Be kind to each other. Be good to each other. Be good to yourselves. Because you're the only you that's here. No matter who you look up on the internet, you're the only you who's here. Remember that. Y'all take care. And I will see y'all down the road. And because it is tradition, I do want to leave you all with a parting thought, which is this. No matter how many times you may say or do something, it's always the next time that's going to be even better. Y'all take care of yourselves. See you next time.